you unlock your phone with your face. You get the perfect song recommendation on Spotify and you ask a chatbot to build an app for you that actually works. It generates our art, it drives our car, it writes our code. AI isn't coming, it's already here. The World Economic Forum's Future of Job Report lists AI and machine learning specialists as the number one fastest growing job role on the planet. And I'm Josh, I'm here to help you navigate these tricky waters and make sure that you pick the best boats so that you get to sail across to success. I have over six plus years of experience working in different companies like DoorDash, uh, Google, ZS, and all of my experience have been in data and AI field. Forget the hype and 30 day code challenges. This is a realistic, definitive roadmap if you want to be a God tier data engineer. First of all, let's talk about what is an AI engineer. AI engineers are not data scientists, although they are friends. So a data scientist might spend some weeks to increase models accuracy from 90% to 92%, but an AI engineer will take that model with 90% accuracy, will host it somewhere to make sure that it can serve to 10 million different users, make inferences without any uh, scalability issues. It should also look out for any bias or toxicity in its responses and it should automatically update the model when required. So in the world of generative AI, you make sure that you build an app like chat with our PDFs and you make sure that you integrate your company's data sources of 10,000 plus documents with this app so that LLM can use those documents to uh, answer your responses. You make a web app around it and you finally host it so that users can use it. It's like you're the bridge between the magic of AI and a real product. And it's one of the most creative and the fastest growing job roles out there. All right, so let's talk about mastering the fundamentals. So just like you cannot build a skyscraper on sand, you cannot learn AI without going through these fundamentals. First, the mathematics. So don't let this scare you. It is literally the language of data. And the thing is, you don't have to be a pro. You just have to learn the basics so that you can get into this role. Again, as I said, you're not the one developing the model from scratch like an applied AI scientist, but still you should learn the math behind it. And that's why the resources that I'm going to recommend are also going to cover just that, the basics. Every image or every word that your model sees, it interprets those things as either a vector or a matrix. And in order to manipulate a vector or a matrix, you need to understand how linear algebra works. You can go through this free YouTube playlist, Essence of Linear Algebra, to know more. Next is calculus. How does a model learn? A model learns by finding the most minimal error point. In order to find that point, you need pure calculus. You need to understand the derivations and gradients to reach to that point. I recommend going through the Geeks for Geeks free tutorial series to understand not just calculus concepts, but to understand how they are used in machine learning or AI's world. Finally, understanding probability and statistics. So AI is all about making a prediction when things are uncertain. In order to evaluate how well your model is doing under uncertainty, you have to understand probability. You have to pre-process your data. And for that, you have to understand statistics. A fantastic interactive resource is Carnegie Mellon's open and free probability and statistics course. Okay, so once the basic math stuff is done, you need to focus on programming and logic. The three horsemen of programming and logic are Python, SQL and DSA. Python is like the king of programming languages when it comes to data or AI specific workflows. So you have to learn that. Automate the boring stuff is the best free place to get started with these fundamentals. It also covers a lot of hands-on. Also, if you're a visual learner and looking for data specific hands-on labs, then you should offer data camps, Python data fundamentals. Also, when you go through Python, make sure you focus on topics like NumPy, Pandas and visualization libraries, either Metplotlib or Seaborn. Because you cannot analyze something that you cannot see. You have to pre-process it and you have to plot your data to understand and find patterns behind it. Next is SQL. So data generally lives on databases and in order to get the data out of your databases and into your model, you need to understand SQL. SQL Bolt's free browser-based ID challenges is the best hands-on way to learn. And another awesome resource I recommend is DataCamp's SQL fundamentals. You can't go wrong with either of them. Next is DSA. See, the thing is, AI engineering is pretty much like data engineering because it's a subset of software engineering. So learning Python alone isn't enough. You need to be able to write efficient and optimal code. This interactive roadmap takes you from basics to advanced. Just one tip, skip the language specific resources since we've already covered Python. And some of the most advanced topics, specifically, for example, dynamic programming and things like that, you can easily skip because they're not really 
that much used in day-to-day -day life as well as in the interviews. Now at this point the foundation is built and you are going to build the house. This is where you become a data wizard. This is the moment you've been waiting for. It's classical machine learning and scikit-learn is the most important library at this phase. Now there are two types of learning. One is supervised and unsupervised learning. Supervised learning is when you have a label and you're trying to predict that label based off of your data. So one example thing is like let's say linear regression predicting house uh, prices which I had done that in 2019, but okay. Uh, and another thing is something like a classification model, uh, looking at a photo and maybe classifying it as a cat or a dog. There are also other algorithms like logistic regressions and decision trees or support vector machines. Second thing is unsupervised learning where you're not trying to predict an outcome or anything, you're just looking at your data and grouping them together by some correlation. Scikit-learn user guide is one of the best documentation sets ever written. So for classical machine learning, don't forget to use this. After classical machine learning, you enter the world of deep learning. Now deep learning is the technology that powers literally almost every latest advancements of AI, be it image generation or image recognition or even large language models. We are basically moving from building just statistical models for prediction to creating a complex neural network architecture so that the machine can think like a human. Here we are training the weights and biases of neurons within the machine just like we would train a human brain. So to build these networks, you need to know either one of these two things. One is TensorFlow and second is PyTorch. On one side, we have TensorFlow, which is developed and backed by Google. TensorFlow is like complete end-to-end -end platform for machine learning. And you can just go through the official tutorials here. And on the other side, we have PyTorch, which is developed by Meta AI. It is really loved from research community for its flexibility and Pythonic feel. And I would recommend this particular course to get started with it. Don't learn both of these things. Just pick any one thing. You cannot go wrong with any one of them and stick to it. But that's not enough as an AI engineer because you're not like building models from scratch. All of these things are important for understanding. But the main thing that you'll be doing is interacting with already built models like generative AI models. And in order to do that best, you need to understand the best practices of prompt engineering. And for that, go through this course, which contains all the crucial concepts like zero shot, few shot, chain of thought, reasoning type of prompts and more. All right, so that was a lot. Now, your next question might be, once I do all of these things, how do I get started with generative AI in a more structured way? Then you can follow this path, which is like a structured way to learn and become an AI engineer, which is Associate AI Engineer for Developers Track. It's designed to take your existing developer skills and build AI specific knowledge right on top. You'll master the OpenAI API, You'll deep dive into prompt engineering, uh, learn to leverage the Hugging Face ecosystem, understand LLM concepts, and crucially, work with embeddings and vector databases like Pinecone DB. Vector databases are kind of used to store the semantic behind a written word document, and it captures the meaning of a sentence. So that when you ask an AI that, hey, find me hotels in Paris, which are like 200 meters from a metro station, uh, it searches the right document. It is also used behind RAG and agentic RAG. RAG is basically called as retrieval augmented generation. It's a, it's, it's a fancy way of saying that you are basically injecting some information related to your user query and feeding it to the LLM. There's also another thing called agentic RAG, which is letting LLM choose which RAG to call uh, and which tool to call instead of doing it all the time automatically. And talking about agents, there's also one important concept or framework that you have to understand is LangChain or Agentic AI framework, which is based off of LangChain. It's LangGraph. So all of these things are included here. So I would recommend using a structured path like this because it can save you like months of guessing so that you don't have to learn different things from different resources. Now phase four is engineering in production. This is the phase that puts engineer into AI and makes you an AI engineer. So you have to learn about MLOps. A model in a Jupyter notebook is like an experiment. But then when you want to release that model and you want to put it out there in production so that it can serve millions of user requests every day, that's where you have entered MLOps territory. This phase includes three core concepts. Number one is containerization with Docker. To ensure that your model and its environment are perfectly reproducible everywhere, you will package it into a Docker container. And while Docker focuses on individual containers, there's something called Kubernetes, which focuses on managing the entire application that uses tons of these different containers all together. So it's like an orchestration framework of sort for your Docker containers. By the way, you will learn both of them on this really, really good free course here. So I highly recommend this. Don't skip this one. Second is cloud platform. So you'll not be training or tuning large language models on your laptop. 
So that's where you need to learn at least any one of these three major cloud platforms, which is AWS, Azure, or GCP. For example, if you're going with AWS, then some of the services that you should look out for is AWS S3, EC2, RDS, Redshift, and AWS SageMaker. Now, equivalent service of SageMaker on GCP is something like Google Vertex AI and equivalent one on Azure is Azure Machine Learning. So it doesn't matter which cloud platform you pick because they have a lot of equivalent services. By the way, I would also recommend these certifications if you can get them on any one of these cloud platforms. Um, this is achievable by, by going through the courses that I've linked in the description and also taking some mock tests. Third thing you have to learn in MLOps is machine learning pipelines and automations. And this is where you should learn frameworks like TensorFlow Extended or Kubeflow. This is about automating the entire life cycle from data ingestion and training to deployment and monitoring. Now, for those of you who are coming from data science or data analytics background and all you have to add to your arsenal is more concepts about MLOps, then there is one track that I recommend for you. It is Associate AI Engineer for Data Scientist, which is specifically designed to bridge this gap. It focuses on taking your existing analytical and modeling skills and teaching you the engineering best practices for deployment, monitoring, building AI systems. Okay, so you've built the foundations, you've mastered the tools and you've shipped the product. Now, one thing that you have to learn in the very end for advanced learners is being state of the art. For this, you need to understand how a transformer architecture works. It's the engine behind Chat, GPT, Gemini and nearly every major AI breakthrough in the last five years. And the key concept to master is self-attention. There's a really interesting paper which uh, is about attention is everything. It released a few years back, but it is really important and it, and it changed the way transformers started understanding sentences. For example, the word bank in river bank versus bank robbery is very different. Also, it leads us to the most important ecosystem in generative AI, which is hugging face. In modern AI, you rarely build uh, models from scratch, unless you have Chinese super intelligence and are working with DeepSeek. This is where things like hugging face come into place because you use already built and trained models and maybe you do some fine tuning on top of it. Think of it like GitHub uh, for AI models. It has thousands of models, data sets and applications. So also use this when you are trying to build your own project, which brings me to my final topic, which is project building. This roadmap is not over yet. We covered all five most important phases. My final advice is you can build projects on every stage of your learning. Like after your phase one is done, phase two is done. You can build projects for every phase. And then once you're done with everything, build two projects that combines everything that you have learned. And this is where I'm going to link some of the most interesting projects for beginners that I've seen in the description. Don't forget to check it out. And it's like a marathon. It's not a sprint. It will take some time, dedication, and a lot of hard work. But the demand for AI engineers have never been higher. And this is your blueprint for success. So if you found the roadmap valuable, hit like, share, and subscribe. And also let me know which phase of the learning are you. And if you have any questions, thoughts, feel free to drop it in the comment section below. And that's it from my side. See you next time.